I tell you guys, there's some things I talk about that I still need to work on, and this is probably the biggest one. What up, dudes, dudettes? My name is Clark Danger. Today, I want to talk about the six ways to win any argument. Now, I hate the misleading titles on some articles where you say, like, why I hate grape soda, and then the end of the article they say, and that's why I love grape soda, right? But this one, this is, might be a misleading title, the secret to winning any argument, first and foremost, is to avoid it, okay? Now, that doesn't mean you, what, you'll you never get in arguments, but I'll give you six tips to actually win arguments in there, and it's not being better than the other person. Let me illustrate this with a story. There's a guy, he's probably watching this right now, I uh, live on a floor with, and we always go back and forth about the GMO debate, right? You know, I'm very hippie, earthing, uh, tree hugger, I, I think it's all organic and all natural. He's very more pro experimenting, pro science, and, and he's for GMOs, I'm against GMOs. And I love the subject, I research extensively, and, and I feel like I have a good stance on it. And so we'll get into something, and then I'll notice myself, all of a sudden, all my logic goes out the window, and I care more about winning than I do what we're actually talking about. Because when we start getting in that debate mode, right, you get defensive, and you go into attack mode on the other person. It no longer becomes about what you're talking about, it becomes personal, and you, you get so close to your beliefs, when they attack them, they attack you, and now you're defending yourself and not the subject. So, I got six tips for you, but always remember, even if you win the argument, you still lose. You win, and now they feel like shit and inferior to you, but you feel superior and your ego's boosted. Well, do you want to win the argument, or do you want to win that person's goodwill? Just something to think about. I mean, I truly don't think there's a good way to win an argument. Now, you can have, you can turn arguments into dialectics where you put everything on the table and you both say, hey, let's look at what's really true. And you go from there. So I want to give you guys six tips that really help me um, that I've been practicing and, and will continue to practice that I know if you implement, man, can make such a big difference and win Tons more arguments win, in quotations, and I wrote them down. I didn't want to butcher these. So, first one, don't trust your first impression, right? We talked about how you get defensive immediately. If someone comes up to you and says, uh, oh, the Seahawks suck, man. What are you talking about? Seahawks don't suck. You know, and you go into attack mode. They're wrong, I'm right. Anytime you think the other person's wrong, you can't do the, the next five of these, which are so crucial. Don't trust your first impression. All right, let's blaze through these. Listen first. Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, wrote, Seek first to understand, then be understood. That applies uh, dramatically here. I think listening first to the other person also sets you up in a much better place to formulate a response. Because the worst thing is when someone's talking, you're, you're having a discussion with someone, hopefully not an argument, and you're talking, and they're formulating a response in their head, and they're not even listening to you. So by listening first, you let them get all the gunk out of their head. And so many times, all these communication skills, people just want to be heard. They don't want advice. They don't want suggestions. They don't want a new perspective. They just want to be heard. They want to express themselves, and they want to be truly listened to. By listening first, you let them get all the gunk out of their head, ramble on, and now they can listen to you and not formulate a response, okay? Third one, look for areas of agreement and discuss these first. Wow, you know, Joey, I, I do realize that you feel uh, GMOs are pro-science, and I think the population control, I mean, you know, by 2014, we're going to have over 10 billion people on this planet. It's insane. Yeah, we got to come to new ways of feeding people. That works so much better than, oh, dude, you're so wrong. Are you kidding me? You know how sustainable organic farming is if you do it right? And GMOs suck and they do this. See how we're clashing now. But if you look for areas that you appreciate in their arguments, oh, man, I, I do realize you think the 49ers are cool, man. But hey, the Seahawks, you know, we're doing good, too. We have similar uh, tactics in our offense, and, you know, we got good passing, and they're both good teams in a great division. You're setting it up in such a more positive manner. 
Now, I know that doesn't go over uh, easier said than done, right? Especially with football. Look for areas you agree on. Maybe that's in a relationship and you say, look, Kelsey, I want the best in a relationship. You want the best in a relationship. You want to be loved. I want to be loved. You want to give the most. I want to give the most. Set it up like that. Now it's flowing. It's so much more better than trying to clash and get defensive. So that's number three. Number four, be honest with yourself. I've talked about radical honesty on this channel before, okay? And get honest in the facts. It's really hard. You ready for it? You might actually be wrong, right? There's a possibility. Uh, I love the example of about being wrong. And if you are, admit it. It's okay. You can strike out. You can make three out of ten hits in pro baseball, and you get paid $20 million a year. That's phenomenal. You get out seven out of ten times. It's okay to be wrong. You don't have to get it. You know, you make 55% uh, 50, 50, of your sales on Wall Street. You get paid millions of dollars a year. You're one of the best brokers out there. You know, <laughs> the trick is being right more than you're wrong. But if you're wrong, and you will be, admit it, apologize, and listen openly. Okay, five. Could they be right? This goes with the first one. So getting honest with yourself, saying, is this really true? Is this, is this how it really is? And then could they be right? Yeah, they could be. I could be wrong. Just getting that in your mind, now you can truly listen to the person. And the last one, shut up. This one, hardest for us. We all have that junk in our head we're trying to ramble out. Remember like the second one? Just shutting up because anytime two people are talking and they're heated, there's no discussion going on. You might as well be talking to a wall or talking to a screen or talking to a camera. Okay, you're spitting words at each other. You're not really listening. So shut up. Let the other person talk. Also, I didn't write this down, but it's a really good one. If you're in a relationship and you're having conflicts, always ask, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, how important is this to you? And if they say, you know, oh, it's like a three, you know, you just didn't do the dishes. Totally different approach than if it's a 10 and she really felt hurt that you haven't spent three weeks with her or something like that. You know, always ask, getting a scale, getting a range for that. And you want one more? I'll give you one more. This one is the best communication skill. Actually, I'm going to save it for another video. All right, guys, that's it. Six tips to win any argument. But remember... Anytime you make the other person wrong, you're not necessarily right. And one of the best ways to actually win an argument is to avoid it. Use those six skills. I hope you wrote them down. If not, go back, write them down. Try and do one a day, two a day, three a day, and you'll find that your relationships and your life are so much better. Control your life. Do not let life control you. Later, guys.